Today we're going to discuss how to create a cohort definition in the Atlas platform. On the left hand side we're going to go to the cohort definitions function. When we click on cohort definitions we'll be brought to a list of existing cohort definitions that have been created. But in the top right we'll see a blue button that says new cohort. Clicking the new cohort will open up a new cohort definition that we can fill in together. Let's say that we would like to create a new cohort uh, that represents new users of ACE inhibitors who have a prior diagnosis of hypertension. Once we've given this name to the cohort definition, we can save this cohort definition. And now we can begin to define the components of that cohort definition. The three main sets of criteria that we need to establish are the cohort entry events. Basically, what do you need to observe so that someone enters a cohort? The inclusion criteria that will be applied to those cohort entry events to identify what subpopulation we are going to use. And then the cohort exit. How does a person leave the cohort of interest? So in this case, if we would like a cohort of new users of ACE inhibitors, we need to select an initial event. And to do that on the right here, we'll click the Add Initial Event dropdown, and we'll see all of the domains of the OMOP common data model available. Conditions, devices, drugs, measurements, observations, procedures. In this case, we are interested in the drug ACE inhibitors, and so we will add a drug exposure event. Selecting the add drug exposure event creates this record that says we are looking for cohort entry events, which are events having any of the following criteria, a drug exposure of, and then we have this blue box that says any drug. If I click the drop down for that, we can see that we can import a concept set to represent the expression we'd like to use to define the drug of interest. If I click Import Concept Set, a list of all the available concept sets in your Atlas platform will be made available. Here we can see all of the concept sets in this table, and we can sort on their name, or we can search in this filter box. Searching for uh, ACE inhibitors, we can see a, cohort, a concept set we have already defined, ACE inhibitors, and select it from the list. Once we select the imported concept set, you see it's now displayed here to say that our cohort entry events are going to be a record of a drug exposure of ACE inhibitors. If I further click that dropdown of ACE inhibitors and hover over our concept set, we can see what that concept set expression is, and here it is the listing of all of the active ingredients within the ACE inhibitor class. Now this gets us all records of ACE inhibitors. Um, but we may want to apply additional domain-specific attributes. And so here on the right-hand side, we can click Add Attribute to decide what characteristics we want to add. For us to ensure that we're identifying new users, we may be interested in finding the first exposure, which is this first dropdown. And if I click that, we'll see that it adds this criteria to the cohort. Now we are saying we are looking for entry events that are a drug exposure record of ACE inhibitors, requiring that that record be the first time in a person's history. That is, the first time we see an ACE inhibitor record for any given individual. Additional attributes that we could consider uh, would be age criteria, gender, start date, end date, and all of the domain-specific attributes that are available in the drug exposure domain. So for example, we may want to limit our, our population to people who are aged greater than 18 at the time of their first use of the drug. We may want to limit ourselves to people who are in the database uh, sometime after some calendar period of time. So here, if say, after 2000. These become criteria that will then be imposed on this drug exposure rule. Finally, we need to establish in our cohort entry events whether or not we are going to pose any continuous observation requirement. For us to create a new user cohort, we may want some period of time for which we uh, do not observe the drug in order for us to have confidence that this is truly new use and to distinguish it from prevalent use. So here we may specify a requirement of uh, 
at least one year or 365 days of prior observation time before the first ACE inhibitor is actually observed. That would give us some degree of confidence that that may represent new use. We then can limit our initial events. And here we are, because we are looking for the first time of a new use of an ACE inhibitor, we can select an earliest event per person. Note that a cohort entry event could in fact be multiple events for a particular individual, depending on the phenotype you are trying to specify. Now that we've defined our cohort entry events, we can define uh, any number of inclusion criteria that we would like to apply to this cohort. So here I'm going to click new inclusion criteria and I can define the inclusion criteria I'm interested in. We said that we would like for these people to have a prior diagnosis of hypertension. In this particular case, we now need to define a criteria that represents that clinical idea. Clicking on the add criteria, once again, we can see all of the domains of the OMOP common data model made available. In this case, a diagnosis of hypertension would be represented in the condition domain. So we will add a condition occurrence criteria. And here we see the criteria says, we're gonna find all of those events that satisfy the criteria of having at least one occurrence of a condition occurrence record of any condition. Uh, where the event starts between all time before and all time after. Effectively, we'd be looking for any particular uh, condition record just to exist for a person. We, this blue drop down once again, provides the ability to either select concept sets that are part of this cohort definition or to import new concept sets. So here, if I want to import a concept set definition, I could look for the concept set hypertensive disorder. And now, if I want this to be prior to the exposure, I'll specify that the event of hypertensive disorder must occur all time before and zero times before the index event, which is the first exposure to the ACE inhibitor, detailed above. In this regard, we've now found new users of ACE inhibitors, and we've restricted to the subset of those new users who have at least one diagnosis of hypertension. If we go to the last segment, the cohort exit, we can now define how does a person leave the cohort of being a new user of an ACE inhibitor. And we have multiple options available. We can define it until the end of continuous observation. We can define it on the, as a fixed duration of time relative to the initial event, or we could define it as the end of continuous exposure. If I select end of continuous exposure, we now can select a concept set for which we are going to look for the drugs that should be continuously exposed. Here, that may be the ACE inhibitors. And we can specify a persistence window representing the maximum allowable gap between successive records that we would consider to be a continuous period of exposure. So if we tolerate a 30-day gap between prescriptions, then we can actually specify that here. Altogether, we have now created a cohort definition of co patients who enter at the time of their first ever ACE inhibitor exposure, who are over 18, uh, and their first exposure happens after the year 2000. They have to have at least one year of prior observation. There's an additional inclusion criteria that they have to have a diagnosis of hypertension prior to their exposure, and they will leave the cohort when they stop being continuously exposed to ACE inhibitors. I'm gonna save this cohort definition. And up top next to the definition, there's other components that you can evaluate. You can examine the concept sets that are contained within, each, within your definition to ensure that those represent the concepts of interest. We can generate this cohort uh, on any of the sources configured in your Atlas platform simply by kicking the generate button. We would be able to run this analysis uh, on a particular data source. Additionally, if I go to the export tab, we can see a textual description that fully specifies what this cohort definition represents. We have a graphical view that allows you to have a representation of what it means to be in this cohort. And we also have a JSON expression, which is an open community standard uh, to allow anybody in the Odyssey community to be able to design and execute this study.
that JSON expression will then be uh, able to be rendered into an SQL statement that could be executed across one of many different database platforms. The Messages tab uh, provides you warnings as you have defined your cohort definition in case you have uh, applied any logic that might not make sense. With this cohort definition in place, if I close this cohort definition, we'll see that our new cohort definition, new users of ACE inhibitors who have a prior diagnosis of hypertension, is now available in my cohort definition list. And for all subsequent analyses, I can now use this as a reusable component. If you're interested in learning more about Atlas and any of its uh, analytic capabilities, or you want to learn more about the Odyssey community, uh, please check us out at odyssey.org.